Hey guys, welcome to our first set of videos on Chapter 5, Electric Fields. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the subsection, Chapter 5.1.1, which is to define electric charges and uh, for electric forces and fields. So electric charge, electric force. Okay, so that's just got a little bit lazy there. And then electric fields. Okay, so it's all electric. Um, I'm also splitting 5.1.1 into two parts because it's it's quite long. So I want to keep the learning um, manageable and not let the videos uh, or your brains get too let, not let the videos get too long or your brain get too tired. My brain is tired right now. Um, so uh, we've got four learning objectives today, and uh, I'm just trying to change the style up a little bit to maybe make things a little bit easier by using a little bit more colors. So um, here's our first learning objective, which is just to describe some experiments to establish the nature of charge. So uh, these are two experiments that you may or may not be able to do at home. Uh, you can get, uh, if you can get your hands on some animal fur at home, maybe have a pet uh, and you have some amber or maybe even a, a glass rod or plastic rod. Um, you can use that to um, rub it onto your, your your pet's fur, they may not like that very much that you're using this. Uh, please don't be cruel to animals, by the way. Uh, Ibis is, and I am also very against that. So um, don't torture animals by um, over rubbing uh, different rods on their fur. On their fur, okay, don't do anything else with it. Um, now a glass rod uh, with a little bit of fur also works really, really well with water. You can bend water. If you turn on the tap, and let a little trickle of water um, flow through, uh, you're gonna get some really, really good um, effects on that in bending water. Okay, so uh, next up, I'm going to invite you to think of one of your own past experiences where you can demonstrate electrostatics. So please pause this video, make a quick note in your notebook and take a moment just to pause and reflect. Okay, welcome back. Uh, hope you did take that moment to pause and reflect. Um, now we're gonna quickly talk about what is a charge, okay? So a charge is one of the most fundamental things in our study of electricity and magnetism. Uh, we sort of went backwards. We covered chapter seven first, so you should have some idea of what charge is already. Uh, but the official definition is that charge is a scalar quantity that can cause an object to experience a force. And specifically, we're referring to our electrostatic force here. Okay, and later on when we also introduce the idea of magnetism, it will be the electromagnetic force. Okay, but for now, we'll just refer to it as the electrostatic force. And charges can be either positive or negative. You probably learned this back in, uh, in earlier science classes in maybe grade eight or grade nine. And um, charges can also be neutral, okay? So be very, very careful. We like to say that the an object has a net neutral charge, okay? So as you might know already is that uh, different objects are made up of atoms and in the center of atoms, there's protons and there's neutrons and there's electrons, okay? But atoms on their own are generally, or they try to be neutral, okay? So atoms have a positive charge, they have a negative charge, but because they have an equivalent amount, so suppose we have hydrogen here, one proton and one electron, that is perfectly neutral. It's plus one and it's minus one. And then together that makes it zero, or we usually like to say it has a net zero charge. Um, charges are measured in a unit called coulombs, and we'll cover that a little bit later, okay? And charges, unlike gravity, can be attractive and it can also repel, okay? So opposites attract and like charges repel. Let's have a quick look at what that looks like, okay? So we wanna be able to give the direction of forces between two charged objects. 
as well as between a charged and an uncharged object. So let's first look at this little section right here first, and look, let's look at this table here below. So uh, we've got um, four different uh, windows here. So these guys are going to exert a, an attractive force on each other. These guys are also going to exert an attractive force on each other. And these guys are going to repel each other. And likewise, those guys are going to repel. Okay, so repel, repel, and then I'm just going to write attract and attract. Okay. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more details of this when we talk about one of the examples a little bit later. Now, uh, this second part here is uh, quite closely related to our third learning objective. So we're going to look at both of those together. So between a charged object and an uncharged object, and that the way that the charge is separate. Okay. So here we have a situation where this might have been one of the examples you thought about. Okay. Is that when you have a person, when you have a person, let me see if I can draw. Right, we're going to draw a person here, okay? And he's got some hair, okay? And when you rub the balloon on a person's hair, the balloon is going to take on a particular charge. So the balloon may take on a positive charge. And what's going to happen is most of the electrons are going to get pulled over into the person's hair. Okay, so in fact, actually, you, you can try to pull most of the electrons, uh, but that's why you see a few little pieces of green inside of the balloon. So I purposely left a few electrons in. It pulls quite a few away to make it positively charged, but in fact, there are still some electrons left over in the balloon. Okay, so now that you've got the balloon, it's positively charged, you're now going to bring that over to a wall that is um, equally charged. So this is actually what it actually ends up looking like. So before, it actually looks something more evenly distributed. So sorry for spoiling the what the result looks like. Okay, so this is what a wall is. Okay, this is neutrally charged. The Positive and negative char charges are randomly, or uh, sometimes we like to say they're, they're evenly distributed, but really it's random and mostly equally distributed. Okay, And so what we do is we bring our balloon towards the wall, like so. Okay, Now, we don't want it touching the wall. Okay, It appears to be touching, but really it isn't actually touching. It's very, very close. I'm just going to do it a little bit further away so we have a little bit of room. Now, what happens next is remember that similar charges will repel. So I'm just going to quick, make a quick note. Similar charge repel. So what's going to happen is these positive charges are going to get thrown over here. They're going to get thrown over here to this side. Okay. And remember also that the opposite, that opposite charges attract. And so we have a lot, this is massively positively charged. And so the electrons, the negative charges, are going to get pulled closer to the balloon. Okay, so what happens is that all of these charges ends up rearranging themselves. And what it's done is that we would say that it's actually polarized. Um, it's polarized our, um, our object here. Okay, so I'm just sort of redistributing the positives a little bit, okay. But really most of them, the, the, the positives want to be as far away from each other as possible. So really these guys actually want to be a little bit further over here. And I'm just going to move this last little guy over here. He wants to be as far away as possible, okay? So it creates a polarization, which ends up allowing the balloon to seemingly or magically stick to the wall because now you have a, a negative charge on one side and a positive charge on the other side. 
Okay, so that's how it's able to create an attraction by shifting the charges from one side to the other. Okay, um, our fourth learning objective is to look at Coulomb's law. So we'll state and apply Coulomb's law and also look at the K constant along with the permittivity of free space. So let's dig into the first part. This is Coulomb's law. The magnitude of the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitudes of charges and inversely proportional to the distance squared between them. <gasps> wow, that's a really long sentence. Um, I probably should have had a period somewhere in between that. Uh, so the magnitude of the electrostatic uh, between two and is direct. Nope. Um, yeah, well, it's just a really big definition, okay? So um, this is what it looks like in math. Oh, that looks so much uh, more simple, okay? And all it's saying is that force is proportional to the charges and inversely proportional to the distance squared, okay? And again, if you, uh, because we sort of went backwards, we looked at chapter seven, uh, you'll remember that electrostatic charge has this inverse squared relationship Okay, it has an infinite range, but it drops off very quickly as the charges move further and further away from each other. Okay, so that was from chapter seven. And um, these are quick little definitions of the, um, of the different variables that we've got there. So F stands for force. Usually, again, it's the electrostatic force at this point. Um, R is the distance from the center of two point charges. Now, just very quickly, um, the idea of point charges. So again, we're gonna draw on knowledge from chapter seven. And um, you'll remember that a proton, a proton has two up quarks and a down quark, okay? Or a different way to write that, remember that the up quark is plus two thirds plus two thirds and minus one third, which is our down quark, right? So a proton is actually more positively charged on one side of the quark, if it was arranged like so. So it's actually a little bit polarized, the, the proton, okay? It's massively po uh, positively charged on one side, a negative charge on the other side. But again, for simplicity, we treat a proton as a plus one charge and we treat it as if it came from the center of the proton. Okay, so this was our proton. We have our up, we have our up, and we have our down. We don't really care. We just say, hey, from the center of that, we're going to measure our distance, okay? Because otherwise it, it overcomplicates physics that for, for our purposes is more or less just uh, insignificant in making the calculations that we need to make and, and to, to learn uh, the, the theories behind it, okay? So we treat things as a point charge. We treat it as if it was in the actual center. That's what a point charge is, okay? Uh, so Q1 and Q2 are two different point charges. So again, we don't care how big an object is. So this, you know, we might have a massive table, okay? We just say, hey, at the center of the table, it has this particular charge, okay? Uh, Coulomb's constant, we're going to get into this right away. So it is a constant number, 9 times 10 to the power of 9. Easy to remember, two nines there. Pretty large number as well. Okay, so we're going to look at Coulomb's constant and um, the permittivity of free space. So Coulomb's constant can actually be rewritten as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. And E0, or epsilon zero, is the permittivity of free space, which is free space in our definition here is a vacuum. And it has a value, the permittivity of free space has this particular value, and you might notice that, hey, these two are more or less the same values uh, as each other, okay? And what the permittivity of free space is, is that it can actually represent other um, other substances such as paper, rubber, or water. And what it's measuring is that particular material's ability. So this 
E value is a measurement of a material of the materials ability, so that materials ability uh, to allow uh, electrostatic forces or electric, I'm just going to write electric forces, electric forces uh, to pass or, or to permeate. Like it to interact, maybe. Yeah, to interact. Okay, so what that's really telling us is that the lower the number, the more it allows electricity to flow. So it's almost like saying it's allowing it to conduct and not conduct, conduct isn't really right, but it's allowing that the electrostatic force to interact. Okay, so empty space or air is the best. And then as we use other materials, the electrostatic force gets. Uh, weaker as a result of that. Okay, um, our first example here is we have four point charges of equal magnitude. So we have these guys. I'm just going to write um, W, X, Y, and Z to label all of these guys. And these guys are arranged in a perfect square. And we're interested what would happen, this is straight from Cognitive, by the way, guys, um, what would happen to this guy? So we've got a multiple choice here. Which of those do you think uh, it would uh, is, is correct, A, B, C, or D? So take a moment, pause the video, have a little think about that. Okay, welcome back, guys. Um, so hopefully you've had a chance to make your own hypothesis about what would happen. So the best way to approach this is to draw some vectors. Okay. So the reason I labeled it is because it's going to make it a little bit easier to talk about. Okay. So X and Y are going to repel each other like that. And I'm going to write W, that's due to W on X. Y is also going to repel it as well. So that's going to happen this way. And again, if we think about our, if we think about this here, um, this is uh, this distance here is a little bit further than this distance. Right? The diagonal is further. It's the hypotenuse, right? It's a bit further away. Um, so this is going to be a little bit smaller. So this had a value of one. This might. This is going to be small. Let's say 0 0.8. Okay. And lastly, we also have an attractive force. Okay, and that also has a magnitude of one, okay, because it's on the side and not on the hypotenuse. And this is due to Z or Z. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify, I'm going to simplify W and Z. So W and Z could be simplified to that. Okay, now this is going to be of a greater magnitude than our other one over here. This is going to be one okay, in terms of our vector addition. So actually, it's going to be more than one. It's probably going to be like 1.2. So um, this is greater. This is due to uh, Z and W. Okay, so it's greater than X. Okay, so overall, uh, X, sorry, the, the Y uh, arrow is going to weaken this a little bit. So uh, it looks like it's probably going to be B is going to be our result. Okay, uh, example number two. So this time we're going to be working with Coulomb's law here. A point charge A of positive 2.55. So uh, in the textbook, it doesn't actually say positive, but if it doesn't, it's actually positive 2.55 times 10 to the power of negative 6. So Coulomb charges are usually quite small. Um, if you have one Coulomb, um, that's like being struck by a lightning bolt, guys. So um, we don't deal with static charges that large usually. Okay, it's separated by 0 0.75 meters apart. So really quite close. And uh, the point charge B is negative 3 times 10 to the negative 5. So again, a smaller number. Uh, determine the force exerted 
by point charge A on point charge B. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get into some calculations. So F, K, Q1, Q2, R squared, okay? K is nine times 10 to the power of nine. I'm gonna skip writing the units because I don't have that much room. Uh, 2.55 times 10 to the power of six, negative six, negative three times 10 to the negative five. And that's divided by 0 0.75, and we have to square that. And the result uh, is going to be, I think it's 1.22, uh, or negative 1.22. negative 1.22 newtons, okay? Now, um, with electrostatics, because there's there's the charges affecting things, um, we would actually say that um, the best thing is to maybe understand what the situation is. So if A was over here and B was over here, then the point, the force exerted by A on B is gonna pull to the left, okay? So the best thing is to actually have an actual diagram and say it's being pulled to the left. And what is the force exerted by point charge B on point charge A? So the magnitude of the force is identical. Okay, It doesn't matter if it's B on A or A on B, uh, even if they are different. So they are different values. They exert the same amount of force, which is 1.22. Okay, but B is going to exert, uh, B is going to be pulling it this way. This is from B. Okay, so the magnitude is 1.22. The direction in this particular case is going to be to the right. Okay, so equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. All right, guys, uh, that's it for today. Uh, we'll see you guys back next time for part two on charges and fields.